Let me show you how to get the best microphone settings for your microphone. And I'm gonna use a budget mic just like this so you can follow along at home. First thing we need to do is go into the settings in the bottom right corner. You can use OBS Studio or Streamlabs. It's virtually the same exact process. Twitch Studio, a little bit different, but you can do something similar. Then we're gonna go to our audio tab. The microphone I'm using now is the microphone one here. So I'm gonna add in microphone three, the microphone that we're using, the budget mic. So I'm gonna use this Fifine microphone. If you don't see your microphone from the drop down list, unplug it, replug it. Make sure you have the drivers installed for your specific specific microphone. It'll likely be mentioned in the instructions, so check that out, and then restart OBS Studio. But if you see your microphone, fantastic. Just click your microphone, hit apply, and hit OK. Now you can see when I'm talking into my microphone, you can see the levels going up and down here for Mic Aux 3, the thing that we chose. But now in order to hear the changes that we're making, we're going to go and click these three vertical dots next to it. Click Advanced Audio Properties. Go to Mic Aux 3, the one we picked. And then we're going to turn Audio Monitoring to Monitor and Output. Now you'll be able to hear yourself in your headphones to make the necessary changes. If you're only hearing yourself through one ear or one speaker, you can change the signal to mono with this little box right here, and that'll make sure it comes through both ears or both speakers. If you're not having that problem, you can leave it unchecked. But once we can hear ourselves, we're gonna click close. If you guys are wondering how I got this cool free overlay for OBS Studio, I'll leave a video in the top right corner explaining it. But let's go over one of the most important things, which is mic placement. As you can see right now, I'm using a desk boom arm stand, which gets the mic perfectly in front of my face, which is what you wanna get. So I'll leave a link in the description down below to a cheap one that's not gonna break the bank. But let's actually switch to the budget microphone that we're going to be working with today. So this is the microphone that we'll be using today. As you can see, it comes with a little stand here, but if I put it on my desk, it's way too far. You want to have your mic about four to six inches away from your mouth. And if you're unsure of how long that is, Never mind. By the way, if you can drop a quick like on the video for the YouTube algorithm, I appreciate it. But you want to have it about four to six inches away from your face, which is why I recommend getting the desk boom arm stand. But if you're balling on a budget or if you're lazy like myself and I don't want to unscrew this and set it up, we are just going to use the budget option, which is this box. So we put the box on the desk and we put the stand on the box and there we go. We got about four to six inches away from our face. Next thing that's super important is make sure you're talking to the right side of the microphone. A lot of beginners and even myself, I've done this before, is you're not talking into the right end of the microphone. You can't really tell which is the right end just by looking at it. So you might have to look at the instructions, but you can tell if I turn it around and I'm talking into this end, thinking that this is the front, you can definitely hear it that that is not the front. Also, some microphones are an end address, so you have to talk into the top, which is a lot of the podcasting mics like the SM7B. You talk into the top and not the front. So a lot of people get confused just because they see it and they don't have the correct microphone for that. So make sure you're talking into the spot that you're supposed to be talking to. But now we have the distance correct. We have the location correct. Let's Let's get this thing sounding professional. By the way, I think this is one of the best budget microphones you can get. It's about 50 bucks, and I made an entire video on it, which I'll leave in the top right corner for you. But let's get this microphone sounding even better. So right off the bat, I'm just gonna turn the volume down just a little bit. We are going to click the dots again, and we're gonna add some filters. The first filter we're gonna add is a compressor, and what it's going to do is it's going to make our whispers louder and our screaming not as loud. So it's gonna be easier on your listener's ears. So we're gonna turn the ratio down to four. We're gonna put the threshold all the way to the right. We're gonna change the attack to two, which Oh my God, please. All right, I'm, I'm typing it in. And then we're gonna change the release to 100. And then the output gain will leave at zero. So now we're actually gonna stretch this window so we can see our signal. But what we're gonna do now is if you see the signal, it's hitting right about the yellow, which is great. When I whisper, it's not even touching the yellow. So I'm gonna turn up the output gain and keep whispering because this is the quietest sound that I usually make. And I'm gonna adjust the gain until my whisper is about in the middle of the yellow. And I think this is pretty good. So now I'm gonna shout and you can see that we are clipping so bad. So I'm gonna bring down the threshold and keep shouting into my mic, which is about the loudest I'm going to be. And I'm going to keep shouting. I'm going to keep shouting. I'm going to keep shouting until it's about just barely touching the red. So that way, if I'm whispering, you can hear me pretty good. And if I'm shouting, I'm not blowing your eardrums out. But now you can hear that the background noise is getting so blastedly loud. So we're going to add an expander and that's going to fix that issue. So we're going to change the expander ratio to four. Then we're going to take the threshold all the way to the left. And then our attack is going to be two. And then our release is going to be a hundred. And the output gain we do not touch. So now I'm going to tap on my keyboard and keep typing. You should be able to hear that even though my microphone's kind of far from it. But now I'm gonna shut up and I'm going to increase the threshold until I do not hear that anymore. And so now you can hear that my keyboard is not getting picked up anymore. So you can kind of fine tune it around there. I think right around here is good, but be careful if you turn the threshold too high, it'll start chopping out my voice. 
and you won't be able to hear me, you're not gonna be able to hear yourself too great. We're gonna bring this back down to right about there, I think is pretty good. But every microphone's different, so just play with it until you get something you like. If you start to notice that the beginning of your words are getting cut out, especially with words that start with an H, like hug, then you can go to compressor and turn the ratio down a little bit, and that'll start to smoothen out. So that way, when I say hug, you're gonna hear the full word and not the beginning part getting chopped off. If you're in a noisy environment, first of all, you're gonna wanna put a carpet down, make sure you're not doing this on hardwood floors, and you're not in a corner or against some glass like I am inconveniently now. You can put some pillows on the wall, some real budget options, but just putting yourself in a quiet space is gonna make a world's difference. But if you don't have that option, you can add the plus and you can add a noise suppression, click okay. And you can choose one of these two. It depends if you have a good graphics card, if you have these options even. I personally don't like to use them because I think it alters the quality too much, but it's an option for you if you'd like. So I'm actually gonna turn this off with the eye. So now let's get to arguably the most powerful tool to control your microphone quality. So we're gonna be using what's known as an EQ and I'm gonna leave this link in the description down below, which is free. And we're gonna download the Reaper plugins 64 bit. Once it's downloaded, we're gonna click install. This part's very important. If you mess this up, it's gonna be a headache. So just pay attention. So I hit agree and then we hit next. And then our destination folder, this is what's important. We're gonna click browse. We're gonna go down to our C drive and then we're gonna go to program files. And then we're gonna go to common files. And then once we've clicked on common files, we're gonna make a new folder and call it VST. Two. Then we're gonna hit okay. And now you can see program files, C drive, common files, VST2, VST plugins. That's where you want it to be. So it'll show up in OBS studio. Then we're gonna click install and hit close. Now we can go into the filters. We can add a new filter, VST2 plugin, click okay. Now we can click the drop down. You can see that I have a bunch because I'm a music producer and I spent a lot of money on these. But what we wanna look for is RIA EQ standalone. So we're gonna click RIA EQ standalone. We're gonna click plugin interface. And so this might look a little intimidating at first, but I promise it's really easy. The left hand of the side here, you can see when I'm talking is the lower frequencies and the right hand side is the higher frequencies. So if we take these little nodules, which are called bands, we can actually drag this to the left and then I can drag it up and you can notice that the bass in my voice is getting more and more bassy because I'm dragging the bass up higher. But if I go down on the bass hand side, the lower frequency, it gets rid of the bass. So with a lot of budget microphones, a lot of people like to add some bass and it adds a little bit more deep of a sound quality without having to spend a bunch of money on it. So we can add a little bit of bass if we'd like. You can also add another band by right clicking and click add new band. You can also add the right hand side all the way up, sounds more crispy, all the way down, gets rid of the crispiness. So depending on what your microphone sounds like, you can play this to ear and make it sound as good as you want it to. And if you happen to mess up and you don't know what to do, you can right click, reset all bands to zero, and you start fresh there. But really the world is your oyster when it comes to this. So watch this video to the side of me, it's going to help you so much with your streaming journey. My name's Cody and I'll see you in the next one.